So we're going to launch into chapter 9, one of the most important chapters. Uh, we're going to A, learn how to graph quadratic functions. B, we're going to learn how to solve any quadratic function, Johnny Ray. Uh, even the ones that don't work out to integer values. So you're going to learn the infamous quadratic formula that allows you to um, take square roots of numbers that aren't perfect squares. So what's kind of interesting is that that's part of your curriculum, but what's not part of your curriculum is si simplifying square roots. So we're going to have a little bit of a challenge when you're looking at the answers to homework, so we're going to have to probably talk about that later. So today we're going to focus in on a graphing quadratic functions. Will this be on the test? This will not be on the test. It will be in the next group. Uh, so today is the 27th. No, we're done with Chapter 8 as of Friday. So this is now Chapter 9. We have Chapter 9 and we have Chapter 12 left. Okay. Well, there's a lot of stuff in Chapter 8, which is very foundational for our class. So let's talk about what is a quadratic function, just to remind ourselves. So a quadratic function, uh, number one, it's non, oops, nonlinear. So that means when you graph it, you won't get a line, okay? Uh, standard form for the quadratic for function is what we've been using to solve our equations. And I know I've listed standard form with capital letters. It really doesn't matter. But you have AX squared plus BX plus C equals 0. And again, just to identify, the first term is called the quadratic term because of the square. The middle term is called the linear term because of the single exponent on the X. If you don't have a quadratic term, you would have a line. And then the last guy is called the constant. Okay, so this, again, should be review of what we've already covered. Um, okay, the name, do you guys remember what the name of this graph is going to be? Parabola. Parabola, very good. And do you remember what it looks like? Yep, looks kind of like a U. So the parabola, oops, sorry, that's not what I meant to do, is the graph of, and I'm just going to say quad function, and I'm going to abbreviate function, FNC. Now, this guy has a couple of key things about it. We're going to, it looks like, a U, but here's the key thing. A U is totally curved, but we actually do have, oops, that's not very center. We do actually have a very, very bottom point when our parabola is facing upward, okay? <clears throat> and we do have a very, very top point if our parabola is facing downwards. I'm not very central today. Okay. Now, each of those points has a name. Okay. And these are words that you're pretty familiar with. Um, if you have a lowest point, um, it's think about it this way. If you have an entry level job, you usually get paid what kind of wage? Minimum. A minimum wage. So this is called a minimum. Okay. So when the point is at the bottom, this is called a minimum. So we're just doing definitions within definitions within definitions here. So a minimum is the lowest point when parabola faces upward. So some people 
look at it as being a smile, you know, okay? And then this guy, the opposite of a minimum would be a maximum. So, for example, because of how long I've taught, I'm at the maximum on the pay scale, okay? So there's, there's no, I can't get further unless there's raises. And this is the highest point. when the parabola faces downward. Oh, here, let me do that on the next line. That looks bad. Okay. Um, these points also have a generic name. It's both the minimum and maximum. are together called the vertex, okay? Now, I'm going to talk about the vertex in a minute again. <clears throat> Ver. Vortex is something that deals with motion. And don't things get sucked into vortexes? Yeah. What about Gortex? Oh, let's not go That's there. Jeez. I can see that you guys, your mind's really on this. Okay. Let's go back. Uh, so we talked about the, what a parabola looks like. For us, it's upward or downward. If it faces sideward, we've got some issues going on with it. So it is possible to see parabolas that face sideways, but not for us because we're just focusing on these upward, downward. Uh, I'm going to go to my next screen. The next thing to understand about a parabola is a parabola is symmetrical. That means that if I draw a line through the center, that center has to pass through the vertex. I could fold my parabola along that line and the two halves would match perfectly, okay? That line that passes through the vertex has a name. Uh, that is called the axis of symmetry. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> this is the center line. of a parabola that passes through the vertex only. So there's the vertex showing up again. So when we are going to be graphing a parabola, we need to know the vertex. Okay? We need to know the vertex. Very, very important. Okay? Now, what we have been doing for a great part of this class is figuring out the value of the variable, okay? And the reason why that's so very important is because that helps us figure out vertex, okay? And there's other parts that it also tells us where our parabola crosses the x-axis. Now, you guys are going to be using graphing calculators after this course because most parabolas don't cross neatly at integers. So you need a graphing calculator in order to help you find the actual location of sometimes the vertex and where the roots are, where your parabola crosses the x-axis. So for our purposes, we're going to give you pretty numbers because um, you don't yet have a graphing calculator. Um, I actually am going to see the high school tomorrow, and so I can talk to them. They used to recommend the TI-84. I don't know if they've changed the recommendation, but I would never say go out and buy a graphing calculator without knowing what your school is using, because not all teachers use the same graphing calculator. So it's very important to buy whatever that school that teacher uses. But I think at each school they're pretty uniform as to which kind they use. So I'll ask tomorrow when I'm at Edison. So Huntington people, sorry, I, I don't know, 
but they may know um, if there's one. And then you guys can ask Modern Day. I don't know that one. Okay. All right. Question. I saw somebody's hand go up. Oh no. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. All right. Um, let's go a little bit more in detail. I'm going to give you a little chart that I thought was pretty cool about our parabola. Uh, well, let me just do this. So, last thing is to graph, you're going to need to come up with a table of values. And what we're not going to do is just willy-nilly pick numbers. I'm going to teach you how to pick numbers specifically so that each number you pick should have a partner on the opposite side of the parabola. So we're going to use that axis of symmetry to help us pick values to the, equally to the right and to the left. So we're going to use five values. And what we're going to pick always is the vertex. And then we're going to pick four additional points that are equally distant equally distant from the axis of symmetry. Okay, so I'm going to be very systematic. Now, a lot of people call this a T-chart, okay? Um, it is a little bit challenging sometimes because there's so much math to be done that some people struggle with the T-chart, just making it two columns. That's what a T-chart is, is it just has two columns, an X value and a Y value. Um, so some people like to put a middle column where they actually physically do the math. Some people just like to do the math off to the side. But if you pick your X values the way that I'm going to train you, then instead of doing five sets of calculations, you'll actually only do three. Okay, so we'll come up to it. So what I want to do is copy a chart that's in your book because I think it's really good. It just puts everything into a nutshell. All right, so this chart talks about quadratic functions. Oh, let me change color here. And in that chart is going to be some information that you are going to use, including some formulas that you need to commit to memory. So first thing is we have what's called a parent function. So a parent function is the most basic equation of this type. And every other equation of this type gets built off of this parent function. Okay? Now, because we're using the word function, we don't write y equals, we write f of x equals. Okay? So the parent function is simply the quadratic term. So f of x equals x squared. Okay? So all quadratic functions have that x squared. That's the, the first initial building block. Without it, it's not a quadratic function. Then we have standard form which we've written again, but I like how it, we can put it all together here. So standard form says, okay, well, we may have an x squared, and it may have a coefficient, but then we may also have a middle term, and we'll call it bx, and we may have a constant. So that's it. The graph is called the parabola. And here comes the formula. Oops. Alex. I'm writing Alex instead of axis. Axis of symmetry. So this one I'm going to highlight. And change its color. The axis of symmetry says this. Your parabola is face upward or downward, so the middle line has to be a vertical line. And what variable do all vertical line equations start with? X. An X. Now, how we come up with the axis of symmetry will get revealed later in the chapter, but this is the formula. It looks at your standard form. Now, if your 
quadratic function is not written in standard form, then you may not get the right axis of symmetry. Okay? You're going to take the B coefficient in front of the linear term, and you're going to divide it by two times the coefficient of the quadratic term. So this is a formula you need to memorize. Okay? Oh, sorry, negative B over 2A. Forgot that piece. Now, here's what's interesting about the axis of symmetry. Remember I told you the only part of the parabola that passes through is the vertex, and it has x equals, so it has a, what's the word, um, an ulterior, no, an alternate, e, uh, also known as. AKA. AKA, yeah, but I'm trying to think that I just lost what I, the, the wording I was thinking of. This plays a secondary role as it is the x-coordinate of the vertex. Remember I said we have to have the vertex in our five values. Okay, so it plays a very, very important role. Now, let's see if you guys can figure this one out before I write, before I write the answer out. So looking at standard form, knowing what you know about the y-intercept and what it would look like as an ordered pair, looking at standard form, what is the y-intercept of your parabola? Brandon, yes! Okay, and how did you know that, Brandon? Because um, it doesn't have variable x, so I was thinking about like the slope intercept form, how it wasn't an x, it was b. Exactly. Remember, in your y-intercept, it's zero y-value. So that means all your x's are zero, so that el eliminates the ax squared and the bx, and it leaves you with f of x or y equals c. Very good. Very proud of you. Okay? Wait, wait, what, what he's smart. You can read it. You can listen to it again on the video. I'm not okay. No, I didn't say that. Okay. So here's what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to create that table of values. So I'm going to give you, we're going to kind of work through an equation to do this. So let's start with, uh, let's see, use a table of values. to graph, let's see, y, oops, this one says y equals uh, 3x squared plus 6x minus 4. State the domain and range. Yeah. We talked about domain and range before. All right, so here's what we do. First and foremost, your order, number one. Determine the axis of symmetry. So we have our formula. X equals negative B over A, 2A, excuse me. So what we're going to do is look at our equation, and we're going to identify A, B, C. So according to our equation, what's A? Three. Three. What's B? Six. What's C? Negative four. So this is kind of, we don't always use four, negative four, the y-intercept, all the time when we're doing our shape. But we can double check when we graph, did we pass through where y equals negative 4? If we did, then we graph correctly. Okay. So then we're going to take the numbers and plug them in. So we have x equals the negative of 6 over 2 times 3. Well, that gives me negative 6 over 6, which equals negative 1. So that's my first step is to determine the axis of symmetry. Now over here, I'm going to do my t-chart. <coughs> uh, 
what I'm going to do is take that uh, axis of symmetry, and that's now going to be the vertex of my parabola. So that's the second step, is now that I know the x part, now I'm going to determine the vertex. of the problem. So we've got, we go back to our original equation, and every time I see x, I substitute in negative 1. And I get y equals 3 times 1 minus 6 minus 4 so that gives me y equals 3 minus 10, and that gives me y equals negative 7. So what I'm going to do is in the center, I'm going to write my vertex. My vertex is x was negative 1, and the y is negative 7. So your vertex is negative 1, negative 7. Okay. So now I want to pick values of x that are one above, one below my x value, because that's my center point. So one above x, which is negative one, would be zero. One below it would be negative two. Now I want to go two above and two below, or keep going one above, keep going one below. So above zero would be one, and below negative 2 would be negative 3. Okay? So I'm going to go to my next screen because I've run out of room. I'm going to replicate my chart over off to the side. So we've got x, we've got y. So I always put my vertex again in the center. We picked oh, color code again. What colors did I use? Blue and pink. Okay. So blue one above, one below. And it doesn't matter if the above is on top or the above's on the bottom, it doesn't matter. And then below, one more above and one more below. Okay, so what we did, we'll recap that step, is you're going to choose, if I can spell this, x values, one above and one below, the vertex x. Repeat. Okay. So here's the little miracle that occurs. So remember what our formula is. Now we're going to calculate the y values. Now, I should already know what goes with zero, right? because that's going to be your y-intercept. So looking back at our equation, which was y equals 3x squared plus 6x minus 4, what was the y-intercept? Yep, yeah, the y-intercept is going to be that c value. That's where x equals 0. So we get negative 4 for here. Now, look what happens when I put in his partner going the other direction. So I get y equals 3 times, and we're going to put in negative 2 this time, squared, plus 6 times negative 2 minus 4. That gives me 3 times 4 minus 12 minus 4. I don't know why I put that parentheses in there. Sorry. Which gives me y equals 12 minus 12 minus 4, which gives me negative 4. This is not a coincidence. If you are picking values that are equidistant <coughs> from the axis of symmetry, then their y values should match. So that means that you only need to do three sets of calculations. You need to calculate the vertex. You need to calculate two more x's. And I would either go above 
or below. And what do I choose? The simplest numbers. Brandon. Oh, uh, so like you wouldn't have to do negative 2 and negative 3, you just do 0 and 1 and then it plugs into the bottom ones. Exactly. But here's the only problem with it though. If you make a calculation on, let's say, plugging in 1 and you get the wrong y, then you're going to write the wrong y. But what will happen is when you graph your parabola, it'll do something funky and you realize, oh, I got to go back and check this. Okay? So this is what's beautiful is that you only need to check three numbers, okay? But you get five answers. So let's do with one. So we get y equals three times one squared plus six times one minus four. And we get y equals three times one is three. Oh, yeah, plus six minus four. And we get y equals nine minus four. And we get y equals five. So that's going to be your last numbers. So five here, five here. Okay, now, if you notice, what's happening to the y values? Okay, we'll know that is, but look at overall, because remember we said we have a vertex and we have things that are equally distant. So what's happening to those y values? Are they getting smaller or are they getting larger? They're getting larger. So that's a hint. Guess what direction this parabola is facing? It's facing up. Okay. Now, we talked about this before. We can actually tell looking at the equation from the get-go that it was going to face upward. You guys remember what we discovered? No? Michael, do you remember? Okay. With parabolas, I can look at the equation written in standard form, and I already knew that it was going to face upward without doing any kind of calculations. Okay, so let's write this down. Which is positive? It's only one. So if A is positive, not positive, parabola faces upward. So if, think about it. If you're positive, you're feeling up. So there's a good connection. And if A is negative, parabola faces down. So let's go ahead and let's graph those points. Bring in my graph paper. So We had negative 1, negative 7, we had 0, we had 1, this was negative 4, this was negative 2 was negative 4, negative 3 was 5, and 1 was 5. So I'm going to do my parabola, and again, this is a parabola where you kind of do sketching. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Bless you. Put in some numbers. And I'm going to highlight these numbers in uh, blue. So we have 1, 5. We have 0, negative 4. We have negative 1, negative 7. We have negative 2, negative 4. So notice. They're across from each other. We have negative 3, 5, and they're across from each other. So just kind of sketch it in. And here is the axis of symmetry. Passes right through there. And so you should have a mirror image on the two sides. Okay? Did we cross? The y-axis at uh, y equals negative 4? Yes. In fact, that ended up in our chart. It doesn't always. It just depends on the numbers. Okay? So the worst case scenario is if our vertex x is a fraction, what we would have to do is pick whole numbers that are equally distant from it and then continue to pick whole numbers. So it is, we sometimes do have to graph fractions. So let's talk about the last thing it was asking, domain and range. 
So domain deals with which coordinates? Domain deals with x's. So here's your deal with your parabola. It may not look like it, but your parabola is going to continue to grow outward. Okay? It's going to continue to grow outward. So with parabolas, Joey, whether they're upward or downward facing, they all have the same domain because those are the only two that we're studying. What is going to be the x values for all parabolas? All real numbers, okay? The y's are going to actually have a starting or a stopping point, okay? And that's going to be, no, it's going to not have a stopping point, but it's going to have a starting point because our parabolas start someplace, okay? So we definitely have a beginning to our parabola. So the range deals with our y's, okay? And so where does our parabola begin this particular example? Negative at negative 7. So our y values, and this is how they write it, uh, the domain is going to be the y values that are greater than or equal to negative 7. Okay? So you list the variable, you do a slash, and then you give the range of values. Okay? So for our parabolas, there's going to be a starting y point, and it's either going to be equal to that or greater if it's facing upward, or it's going to be equal to that and lesser because it's facing downward. Okay? So tonight when you're working on your homework, you're going to be asked to figure, sometimes just do fine things, like the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the y-intercept, and they won't ask you to graph. Sometimes they'll ask you to do this whole thing and actually graph. Um, I'm trying to see what all that you have on homework. Sometimes they'll ask for the minimum and max or maximum value, depending on what kind it is, domain and range. So basically, what we covered in one example should cover you for everything that you need to do. Now, we'll talk more details next week uh, because that's when next time we can talk about this. <laughs>